Be still and know that I am God. 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 Be still and know and know that I am God. Sometimes you have to get very still to really know and feel his presence, don't you? Welcome to the reading of the word of God, the never failing, ever living word of God. Today we will be reading once again Vaikra, Leviticus. Leviticus, we are on chapter 27, and we will pick up with verse 14, and we will finish the book today. Hallelujah to the Lamb. All of these laws and statutes that God brought forth and gave to Moses, and Moses taught all the people all the laws and the statutes. And then we will move on in to the wonderful book of Numbers. Numbers, and in Hebrew, that is Bamidbar, B-A-M-I-D-B-A-R. And we will hear about the census that was taken. Hallelujah. When God says there's a census, it's okay. If he hasn't, it's not okay. <laughs> All right, let's get right into it on this March 3. March, the third day of March. Isn't it wonderful? It has all the signs and sounds of spring to me. Leviticus 27, verse 14. And when a man dedicates his house to be holy to the Lord, then the priest shall set a value for it, whether it is good or bad. As the priest values it, so it shall stand. He is the final word there. If he who dedicated wants to redeem his house, then he must add one-fifth of the money of your evaluation to it, and it shall be his. If a man dedicates to the Lord part of a field of his possession, then your valuation shall be according to the seed for it. A homer of barley seed shall be valued at 50 shekels of silver. If he dedicates his field from the year of Jubilee, and they, they kind of balance their life according to that cycle, right? According to your valuation, it shall stand. But if he dedicates his field after the jubilee, then the priest shall reckon to him the money due according to the years that remain till the year of jubilee, and it shall be deducted from your valuation. And if he who dedicates the field ever wishes to redeem it, then he must add one-fifth of the money of your valuation to it and it shall belong to him. But if he does not want to redeem the field, or if he has sold the field to another man, it shall not be redeemed anymore. But the field, when it is released in the Jubilee, that is the year that things are released, things are, are, got, are gotten back, shall be holy to the Lord 
as a devoted field. It shall be the possession of the priest. And if a man dedicates to the Lord a field which he has bought, which is not the field of his possession, then the priest shall reckon to him the worth of your valuation up to the year of Jubilee. And he shall give your valuation on that day as a holy offering to the Lord. In the year of Jubilee, the field shall return to him from whom it was bought, to the one who owned the land as a possession. And all your valuation shall be according to the shekel of the sanctuary, 20 geras to the shekel. But the firstborn of the animals, which should be the Lord's firstborn, no man shall dedicate, whether it is an ox or sheep, it is the Lord's. And if it is an unclean animal, then he shall redeem it according to your valuation and shall add one-fifth to it. <clears throat> or if it is not redeemed, then it shall be sold according to your valuation. Nevertheless, no devoted offering that a man may devote to the Lord of all that he has, both man and beast, or the field of his possession, shall be sold or redeemed. Every devoted offering is most holy to the Lord. No person under the ban who may become doomed to destruction among men shall be redeemed but shall surely be put to death, put to death. And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. If a man wants at all to redeem any of his tithes, he shall add one-fifth to it. And concerning the tithe, of the herd or the flock or whatever passes under the rod, the tenth one shall be holy to the Lord. <clears throat> and there we have rather an explanation here, right of the tenth. He shall not inquire whether it is good or bad, nor shall he exchange it. And if he exchanges it at all, then both it and the one exchanged for it shall be holy. It shall not be redeemed. These are the commandments. They're not the suggestions. They are the commandments which the Lord commanded Moses for the children of Israel on Mount Sinai. And now we have finished Leviticus, and we will move on to Numbers, Bamadbar, Chapter 1, verse 1. Now the Lord spoke to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, in the tabernacle of meeting on the first day of the second month, in the second year after they had come out of the land of Egypt. Imagine, they've been traveling two years after they left Egypt, saying, take a census of all the congregation of the children of Israel, by their families, by their fathers' houses, according to the number of names, every male individually from 20 years old and above, all who are able to go to war in Israel. And this whole thing is going to be based on who is fit to go to war. You and Aaron shall number them by their armies, and with you there shall be a man from every tribe, each one the head of his father's house. These are the names of the men who shall stand with you. And now we're going to hear the names. It's very important, very important as we see Israel progressing and prophecy happening. From Reuben, Eleazar, the son of Shaduar, from Simeon, Shemuel, the son of Jerashaddai, 
from Judah, Nashan, the son of Amminadab, from Issachar, Nathanael, the son of Zuar, from Zebulun, Eliab, the son of Helan, from the sons of Joseph, from Ephraim, Elishama, the son of Amminahud, and from Manasseh, Gamaliel, the son of Pedasur, and from the tribe of Benjamin, Abidan, the son of Geroni, from Dan, Ahizer, the son of Amishadai, and from the tribe of Asher, Pagiel, the son of Okran, from Gad, Eliasep, the son of Duel, and from Neptali, Ahira, the son of Enon. These were chosen from the congregation, leaders of their father's tribes, heads of the divisions in Israel. <clears throat> and then Moses and Aaron took these men who had been mentioned by name, and they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month, and they recited their ancestry by families. They knew it by heart. They recited it by their father's houses, according to the number of names from 20 years old and above, each one individually. As the Lord commanded Moses, so he numbered them in the wilderness of Sinai. <clears throat> now the children of Reuben, Israel's oldest son, their genealogies by their families, by their father's house, according to the number of names, every man individually from 20 years old and above, all who were able to go to war. Boy, that sobered them up, I'm sure. I mean, we are preparing for war. Those who were numbered of the tribe of Reuben were 46,500. From the children of Simeon, their genealogies by their families, by their father's house, of those who were numbered according to the number of names, every male individually from 20 years old and above, all who were able to go to war. Those who were numbered of the tribe of Simeon were 59,300. And I find it very interesting that uh, there's that there's never an odd number. It's always some kind of an even number. From the children of Gad, their genealogies by their families, by their father's house, according to the number of names from 20 years old and above, all who were able to go to war, those who were numbered of the tribe of Gad were 45,650. Not 48 or 49, 50. From the children of Judah, their genealogies by their families, by their father's house, according to the number of names, from 20 years old and above, all who were able to go to war, those who were numbered of the tribe of Judah, were 74,600. From the children of Issachar, their genealogies by their families, by their father's house, according to the number of names, from 20 years old and above, all who were able to go to war. Those who were numbered of the tribe of Issachar were 54,400. From the children of Zebulun, their genealogies by their families, by their father's house, according to the number of names, from 20 years old and above, all who were able to go to war, those who were numbered of the tribe of Zebulun were 57,400. From the sons of Joseph, the children of Ephraim, their genealogies by their families, by their father's house, according to the number of names, 
from 20 years old and above, all who were able to go to war. Those who were numbered of the tribe of Ephraim were 40,500. From the children of Manasseh, their genealogies by their families, by their father's house, according to the number of names, from 20 years old and above, all who were able to go to war. Those who were numbered of the tribe of Manasseh were 32,200. From the children of Benjamin, Benjamin, their genealogies by their families, by their father's house, according to the number of names, from 20 years old and above, all who were able to go to war. Those who were numbered of the tribe of Benjamin were 35,400. Several of these end with 400, don't they? From the children of Dan, their genealogies by their families, by their father's house, according to the number of names, from 20 years old and above, all who were able to go to war. Those who were numbered of the tribe of Dan were 62,700. From the children of Asher, their genealogies by their families, by their father's house, according to the number of names, from 20 years old and above, all who were able to go to war. Those who were numbered of the tribe of Asher were 41,500. From the children of Naphtali, their genealogies by their families, by their father's house, according to the number of names, from 20 years old and above, all who were able to go to war. Those who were numbered of the tribe of Naphtali were 53,400. These are the ones who were numbered, whom Moses and Aaron numbered with the leaders of Israel, 12 men, each one representing his father's house. So all who were numbered of the children of Israel by their father's houses from 20 years old and above, all who were able to go to war in Israel, all who were numbered, here's, here's the total, were 603,550, not 48, not 49, 50. But the Levites were not numbered among them by their father's tribe. For the Lord had spoken to Moses, saying, Only the tribe of Levi you shall not number, nor take a census of them among the children of Israel. But you shall appoint the Levites over the tabernacle of the testimony over all its furnishings and over all things that belong to it. They shall carry the tabernacle and all its furnishings. They shall attend to it and camp around the tabernacle. And when the tabernacle is to go forward, the Levites shall take it down. And when the tabernacle is to be set up, the Levites shall set it up. <clears throat> the outsider who comes near shall be put to death. God means what he says. The children of Israel shall pitch their tents, everyone by his own camp, everyone by his own standard, according to their armies. But the Levites, the Levites shall camp around the tabernacle of the testimony. <clears throat> and why is that? Listen to this. That there may be no wrath on the congregation of the children of Israel, and the Levites shall keep charge of the tabernacle of the testimony. Thus the children of Israel did, according to all that the Lord commanded Moses, so they did. And you can understand 
this arrangement created order so that if they were to break up camp, orderly, they did it and they did it. Everybody knew his job. And so it got done probably as fast as you could do it and not feel rushed. Everybody knew their job, right? They all knew it. They all knew their job. It had been told them. Wow. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We move right along now to the book of Mark, which I asked Scott um, the Hebrew pronunciation, and it's Mordecai. Mordecai, Mark, chapter 11. Mark, chapter 11. And we will have a little preview here of the coming season of resurrection. This will be what happened on Palm Sunday. That's what we call it today. So we will read Mark Mordecai chapter 11. Now when they drew near Jerusalem to Bethage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and he said to them, go into the village opposite you and as soon as you have entered it, you will find a colt tied on which no one has sat. Loose it and bring it. And if anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it. And immediately he will send it here. So they had their instructions. Jesus once again showing them he knows everything. He knows all that is ahead of them. So they went their way and they found the colt tied by the door outside on the street and they loosed it. But some of those who stood there said to them, what are you doing loosing the colt? And they spoke to them just as Jesus had commanded. So they let them go. And then they brought the colt to Jesus and they threw their clothes on it and he sat on it. The first person to ever sit on this colt. And many spread their clothes on the road and others cut down leafy branches from the trees and they spread them on the road. And then those who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And that is a prophetic happening and quote from Psalm 118, verse 26. How about that? And they would have known that. They would have known that. Psalm 118, verse 26. Crying, Hosanna. Blessed to see you who comes in the name of the Lord. And Jesus went into Jerusalem and into the temple. So when he had looked around at all things, as the hour was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Oh, can you just see him going into that wonderful temple, knowing it would be destroyed? And maybe settling his spirit. He wanted the vision before his eyes to be the inside of the temple. Now the next day, when they had come out from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves for it was not the season of four figs. In response, Jesus said to it, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. 
and his disciples heard it. So they came to Jerusalem, and then Jesus went into the temple and began to drive out those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he would not allow anyone to carry wares through the temple. And then he taught, saying to them, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations? But you have made it a den of thieves. Very angry for the moment. And that is a quote that he said from Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 11. Jeremiah spoke this way back all those years before Jesus walked the earth. And the scribes and chief priests heard it, and they sought how they might destroy him, for they feared him, because all the people were astonished at his teachings. When evening had come, he went out of the city. Now in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. That's the opposite of normal, isn't it? A tree usually, you see it start dying from the top down. No, this one says, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. I'm sure they stared at that tree, don't you think? And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Oh, I can just hear Papa Hagen, Daddy Hagen, back in the days when I was young and first born again. Oh, he taught on this scripture. Believe that you receive them before you have them. Believe you receive them and you will have them. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him. Forgive him. Or her, I'm sure, too. That your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. That's how you get your trespasses forgiven. But if you do not forgive, if you hang on with resentment, unforgiveness, hashing over, letting Satan run it all by your head again. Oh, he said this, she said that, they did this. You know how Satan loves to bring up the past and run it all by you again. Stop him in his tracks. Just say it out loud. Stop it. Be quiet, Satan. I'll not think of this occasion again. I'll not think of this time again. It's over. I have forgiven. It's gone. It's washed under the blood. But Jesus cautions, if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. 
well, we don't want to die and arrive before the Lord in judgment with any of that baggage, do we? To interfere with our going to heaven. So very, very important bit of scripture that we have just read. Very important. This is how we are to live, my precious brothers and sisters. Forgiving. And sometimes it seems like you spend the whole day forgiving. Good. Good. Do it. Do it. Get all that taken care of. <clears throat> we move right along now. We're climbing up in the numbers of the Psalms. Today we will read Psalm 46. 46. Given to the chief musician, this was a psalm of the sons of Korah. And it says a song for Alamot. Alamot. Look up that word. A-L-A-M-O-T-H. And here is this beautiful Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling. Selah. Selah. S-E-L-A-H. Look that up. Selah. There is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nations raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, and the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord who has made desolations in the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in the fire. And all of those exciting words, and then we come to what I sang at the very beginning. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. We have a refuge. We can run into him and be safe. Selah. Think on that. Contemplate. Bow your whole spirit and your body, if you want, down, down. Humble, humble. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. And we end today's exciting reading. I'm, I'm so excited about it. With Proverbs chapter 10, verse 23. Proverbs Mishle, chapter 10, verse 23. Just one verse, but a powerful one. To do evil is like sport to a fool. To do evil is like sport to a fool. 
Oh, we are seeing great examples of that in this day and age. But a man of understanding has wisdom. A man who really understands, he sees through all of the situations. He understands what Satan is trying to do and how the Lord is raising up. And all of these situations that we go through like tests of fire, they are not destroying us. They are refining us. They are refining us. And we can judge that for ourselves by how we're reacting. How are you reacting when things like this happen? Do you have understanding and knowledge? Do you have wisdom? Or do you get all upset? This and that and the other. No, a man of understanding has wisdom. Has wisdom. Oh, hallelujah to the Lamb. I want to thank all of you so much for coming and hearing the Word of God. You are such a blessing to me. I want to thank Kathy for all the incredible graphics. Melissa, faithful as can be, putting them on here, there, taking care of it, working with Kathy. Praise the Lord. It all helps. It all helps. Praise his holy name. Let's finish up with prayer. Father God, we are so grateful for a brand new day. Grateful for your word. Grateful we can read it aloud so that our ears hear. So that we have faith because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Help us, Lord, to take it all so seriously. Help us to be faithful, to read it. Help us to not, just don't, just don't do Jane. Just don't, you know, don't say, okay, now I'm done with the word of God. No, please, please, Lord, help us all. Help us all to understand that when we read it, that's just the beginning. Now we need to contemplate. Now we need to look things up. Now we need to read it again for ourselves out loud so that our ears hear our own voice quoting your word. Oh, it goes into your spirit and stays there then. And when you need the word of God, it comes up. God brings it to your mind. And it helps with every situation. Father God, we hold up Jerusalem to you. And we pray for her peace. Peace be in Jerusalem, even though there is war. Father God, be with every single person in Israel. Be with the IDF, the Israeli Defense Force. Be with all the leaders, please. All of the military brass for the defense forces. Father God, we just hold up. Sweet Israel, at this time when all of this is just pounced on them from their enemies. And Lord, you know every situation. You know every heart. You know every broken heart. Lord, we're asking, please, that you comfort let Ruach HaKodesh, wonderful Holy Spirit, let Holy Spirit go everywhere, touching everyone. Father, let your right hand go before the IDF, go before the forces today. Father God, you have the battle plans. Please, precious Lord, on each side, let many this day come to that kind of desperation that we can have in our hearts and in our lives where we just simply call out to you. Lord, let your name be called out in Hebrew, in Arabic, in all of the languages. Your name, not false gods. 
but precious Lord, your name, the one true God, the one who sits on a throne in his heavenly realm. Precious Lord, his son, only begotten son, Yeshua, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, accomplishing the cross, sitting beside him, lifting all of us up now, praying for us. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's too marvelous. It's just marvelous. And we thank you for it, Lord. We are lifting up many people, many situations to you. And we know that you hear. You hear all of us all at the same time. That's no problem for you. You have an ear to hear every single person on the earth. And Lord, we are asking that you turn hard situations around, that many be comforted, that many actually live to see their prayers answered, that they might be a testimony to tell it to many. Lord, you are the exciting one. And we love you so much. We tell you today, Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you for our salvation that you purchased on the cross. Painfully bore all the sin of all the people. All the people that lived before, all the people living now, all the people to live in the future. Everyone. One time on the cross. And we bless you for it. And all of God's people cried a hearty, hearty, Amen. And I pray that you read all that Connie has put on because she has a channel to get it right fresh from Israel. Have a beautiful day in the Lord. Worship him with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. Give him your first fruits and then give him all the rest of your fruits. And let him be honored and magnified. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Bye-bye.